Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for being here today. And um, we have once again a very special treat uh, as far as music is concerned, or as, as part of our sabbatical. Uh, Alexis Dyke is here to play some music for us. So, Alexis, will you please? to meet the real thing, you know, the real pastor. 
Second week in August, he will be back for three weeks. You are a real pastor. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm not the real pastor. <laughs> I am a real pastor. Um, anyway, uh, and for those of you who are vis visiting, there are uh, yellow cards in your seat back in front of you if you wish to fill that out and share any information you'd like to with us about yourself. And uh, Reverend Drew will get a hold of you at some point if you would like, you know, if you indicate that you'd like. Um, if you're watching us online, you can go to oralvalleyucc.org to learn more about our church. And if you would like to contact uh, Reverend Drew or the office, uh, send an email to office at oralvalleyucc.org. So welcome everyone. Um, so we are newly back from a wonderful retreat day yesterday, and we wish every one of you could have been there. Um, I want to give a special thanks to Vera, who's going to be speaking more to you today, to Nancy, um, who brought all the food and things and helped set up and has helped think about all of this, to Priscilla, who uh, helped lead the afternoon session with uh, Nancy and I. And then, she, she's looking like, who me? <laughs> yes, you, Priscilla. And special, special thanks to Jose um, for making both of these days uh, just the most amazing music. <laughs> I'm hearing a lot of people saying that, you know, really brought, brings the level of our joy even up another notch higher. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here, Alexis her parents for bringing her. Um, we still have needs for Fellowship Hour hosts. Uh, as I've said before, while, uh, while we're on um, sabbatical, the Lilly Foundation is paying for the Fellowship Hour food, so you can submit receipts and be reimbursed if you do that. Um, and Nancy and I would be happy to talk to you if you would like to, or you can just sign up in Fellowship Hall uh, for that. There's a sign-up sheet by the table. Um, Warren, are you still looking for ushers for the summer? We're sure. Here. Yeah, you're still looking for ushers for the summer. And uh, so if you have, if you can volunteer for a Sunday or a month, we'd love to have you help usher. He'll train you in. Um, our Thursday brief group is on hiatus for the summer, but it, Harry is available um, by phone over the summer for brief support if you have a need. Looking ahead with the sabbatical, we have next Sunday is Father's Day, so we're kind of celebrating fathers and those who have nurtured our faith. And uh, we're going to have dad food for fellowship hour, so I have no idea what that is, but I can't wait to see. And uh, I want to have you look ahead at Saturday, June 22nd, because instead of our normal worship that weekend, we're going to have the main worship on Saturday evening at 7 o'clock. We're having a Tese worship service, which is more beautiful as the sun goes down and the candlelight goes up. And, uh, and Reverend John from uh, Casas Adobe's UCC will be with us here uh, leading that service and Priscilla will be playing the flute and Jose will be playing piano. So it should be a beautiful evening. And then we will have morning prayer the next morning at our usual time. I will be here and we'll do a very simple worship service that morning, the 23rd. So that's what's coming up. I know. Uh, John has an announcement, but um, again, welcome Alexis, and we're so gifted to have you here. So I, I'm John Gatlin. Um, I, um, I'm going to, uh, I guess, try to get somebody to do what I'm doing now for some Sundays in July. And basically all it is, is to uh, have somebody record the service. 
there's a camera up there that uh, that we put uh, on the pedestal every every Sunday, and uh, it, there's an app. It's a downloaded app. You basically turn on the app when it's on, and it records the service. A little bit more complicated than that, but not much. But for the next three weeks, I can train somebody to do it, and um, and basically Kyle Coke will upload the service to the website every week. So the main thing you have to remember is it's not complicated. There'll be training in the next three Sundays. And the main takeaway that you have to have in all this is uh, if John can do it, how hard can it really be? Oh. <laughs> so are there any birthdays or anniversaries that we're celebrating today? Rich? Yeah, I'd like to recognize uh, this week uh, the 11th year that Karen and I have been together. Ah, 11 uh, years. Yeah. yeah, 11 years together, Karen and Rich. Wonderful. Uh, today would have been my wedding anniversary. Wow. June 9, 1962. And there were many, many wonderful years. Uh, that we did things together. So, yeah, I'm glad it happened. I had two kids out of it. That was wonderful. <laughs> and then I left. Anyone else with a birthday or anniversary? Granddaughter Katie, 27 years old. Oh, oh wow. Wow. fantastic. Wow. Yeah, congratulations, Dan. Anyone else? Birthday or anniversary? Well, now, if you would rise if you're able and greet one another in the love of God and the peace of Christ. Good morning.
causing us to regard all persons as siblings. Beyond division, Christ leads us into uncharted places where the Word and the will of God are the only reliable guides. When we lose our way, Christ stays with us until we are found, and the Holy One leads us toward the apparent dead end of a cross to reveal a highway to new life. Well, teacher, give us the wisdom and courage to follow you. Amen. You may be seated. Join me in the prayer for transformation and new life. Ever present God, forgive us when we stand in disbelief and comfort us when our fears outweigh your peace. For I forgive us when we have come to busy prayer. Help us when we fail to see our neighbors in need. Almighty God, Forgive us when we are overwhelmed with bad news and shut down completely. In these times, remind us that we are called to be your faithful witnesses and your humble servants. Help us to wake up to the word of love, even love for ourselves, and to be a renewing strength each day we be praised. God hears our prayers of repentance and forgiveness and awakens us from doubt, disbelief, and distress by this transforming us. God offers a loving spirit always in our midst to comfort our fears, offer grace, and restore our faith. Thanks be God. Amen.
Vera to come up and give a few words of reflection this morning. Uh, this morning you'll be hearing from Vera, a short piece from Vera, and a short piece from Perry, and a shorter than normal piece from me. And uh, this three months is supposed to be a time of not only renewal for our clergy person, but also congregational renewal for us and uh, personal renewal time. And so we're gonna share in whatever way we want to, what renews us, what we find renewing, and how we feel re renewed in this congregation. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Alexa. Fantastic. So, <clears throat> I'm going to reflect uh, for a moment on this faith statement for thought for meditation. Uh, we didn't know what yesterday was going to turn out to be, but we went anyways. And for my particular part, first of all, thank you to everybody that participated. And I don't want to take the time to list all. You know who you are, and the rest of you, you will see. And you've already seen. But I brought my neighbor, who uh, is a professional caregiver, and the way our, our apartments are opposite each other. So if you go up the stairs, then mine goes to the left and hers goes to the right as you're looking. And then the landings are there. And when we go out on the balconies, our balconies are facing each other. And uh, she's been there about 10, 12 years, something like that. And at first we did, we would run at each other and wave and she wanted to talk, but I only blitz out and I have somewhere I have to be. So it was like, I have to go, I have to go. <laughs> well, in 2020, she had her knees replaced and I was having my knees replaced by the same doctor. So she helped me uh, a bit. But what developed out of that is that we go to the concerts. Now, she's 61, so she's my daughter's age. I had to put a tray on my landing step where the front door is because she keeps cooking and bringing me food <laughs> and leaving it over there. Well, in my German tradition, I would not return an empty dish. So then I have to figure out something to make or something to get that I leave over at her place <laughs> where she has a desk. Well, she came yesterday and it was such a delight to have her. She loved everybody and everybody, I think, really took a liking to her too. We sat together at the dinner table and Rachel was sitting next to us with the kids. We had the most ongoing, blah, 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 fast going conversation, going back and forth and looking at the phones and having the kids at the event, they were awesome. Kids to me should be seen and heard, not not seen and not heard. That old German, I grew up under that and I never believed it and I didn't raise my kids that way either. <laughs> and our kids were just fantastic and what we did is we had a little event and it went, we will, we will rock you. We will, we will rock you for sure. And it doesn't compare to what she's doing, but we had everybody up moving and finding their way of being able to use their hands and their feet and stand up and sit down and lean back and squeeze and push and shove and step. Uh, it was really wonderful, everybody's great participation. So we can do things beyond what we think we can do. I love helping people do that because I'm doing the things that beyond what I thought I'd be able to do at this age, just with the skiing and rollerblading and all of that stuff. So. Uh, come and join us on all our adventures to come. Love you. Bye. Thank you. The next hymn is Won't You Let Me 
be your servant. If those of you who can rise, um, I think you are able to sing. Love, love. Yeah. 
<laughs> all parts of it, um, and go to the individuals a little more. And just, I just left with a sense of, again, when Karen asked us to express or use some word to express it, I just, joy was what I, um, she just my word. Thank you. Nancy was saying that she was inspired by the retreat and experienced joy as the thing that she was left with at the end of her time Thanks for being a community with such a wonderful group of people yesterday. And we continue to be right now. Here, both of you. Well, thank you. Uh, just, uh, you know, uh, request for the eternal's rest for my brother in law, David Savas's soul. And we laid him to rest this week. And uh, talk about having so many emotions. But he was a baseball player. And he was still active, so his uh, part of the last remembrance and they took his ashes to the baseball field where his team played, and they took them all around the baseball field thus in recognition of the last of the score. And it was just so uh, you know, emotional. So if there's joy, if there's sadness, as long as we're all together and sharing the joys, uh, we can get through. Thank you. I'd like to share prayers for a, a classmate of mine. Uh, she just had hip surgery. She's a sweetheart. And just found out that her daughter, who is probably in her 30s or early 40s, stage four, colon and rectal cancer, and is in uh, class ladies. And what is your classmate's first name? Uh, Ella. Ellen is her name. Okay. We're offering prayers for Ellen, a classmate who has been going through hip surgery and just found out that her daughter has cancer. And so we're praying. Her only daughter. Her, her only, only child. Daughter. So we are holding Ellen in our prayers and we are hoping that God's spirit surrounds her and her family with love and healing presence as they go through this difficult time. Any other joys or concerns? Yes. David, how's it doing now? First of all, thank you, Jose, for inviting us to come out today and part of your foundation. I thank all of you for the joy that we got to come out here besides the people that we've been patient. You're a great group of people and uh, we thank you for the us to be invited to come out as well. For many of you who don't know us, but she's our adopted parent. She's our granddaughter by our age, but she was adopted by us. We are her parents for the last, uh, the last 30 years. She has been an incredible joy in our lives. Nothing that we planned on. But something that God said, you know what? That's what you're going to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you for coming out, and thank you to my wife for being so happy. This is our 40th anniversary. Wow, 40th anniversary. She knows me for 42 plus years. So, thank you. <laughs> I know I was just introduced to you, but was your first name? Yolanda. Yolanda. It went right out of my head, as many things do. All right, will you pray with me? Holy One, we come to you this morning remember all, remembering all of the ways in which we are connected one to the other. We come remembering moments of tenderness, moments in which our hardness of heart was softened, seconds when we were piercingly aware of your presence and the presence of your spirit in our relationships with others. We give thanks, O oh God, for the slender web that connects us to those we love, those we care about, those who are part of our circle of support. We pray for the ways in which our busy lives and fractured pasts threaten the delicate weaving that holds the sacred web together. We ask for healing and divine guidance as we seek to reconnect any broken relationships. Dear God, we thank you for moments when we have reconnected after a time of separation, 
Holy One, we thank you for placing us in this community, in other communities, with others, for hearts which are ready and waiting to receive love. And we thank you, O oh God, for the strength of our spiritual community, for the strength which transcends the tumult and fragmenting demands of our daily life and life challenges, and sometimes brings with it the gift of laughter. We bless you, O oh Holy One, for surrounding us with love, with spiritual nurture and sustenance, with prayers and compassion that feed us like bread and drink. We pray today for those who have been lifted here in prayer, either silently or aloud this morning, especially Perry and Rich for their celebration of life together, for uh, Vera's anniversary, for granddaughter Katie, for Alexis's gifts. We give thanks of God for her presence and her family's presence in our midst, for the natural wonder that takes our breath away, for our time of retreat together, which has deepened relationships and is only going to spread joy in our wider community here. We pray for Jose, for David, who has passed. We ask that God hold David in his loving arms. And we pray that David's family and the Solorzano family are given comfort and healing during this time. And we pray, pray for classmate Ellen, for all of the difficulties she is going through with surgery and with her daughter's severe illness with cancer. We ask for God's healing. We hope that whatever miracles can happen will happen for her. And we give thanks for David and Yolanda and their 42nd year together and their adopted family living in joy with Alexis. We offer our prayers for those whose needs and cares are known to you alone, O oh God. Surround them with your love and healing presence. Comfort those who suffer and teach us where we may be of service to your people who despair or hurt. Be always in our hearts, O oh God. Move between us, binding us to each other and to you. And now we remember the words that Jesus taught his disciples and his friends, singing together now. Reflection to put her back. Yeah. Well, I loved what uh, I 
of humor in Vera's little thing. Mine's going to be just a little bit more serious. You can laugh if you want to, <laughs> but it's going to be a little more serious. Um, I'm going to just share a little bit of reflection on what God has been doing in my life and uh, the last few years and how it has changed my perspective on the world, on you all, on me and my relationship with my beautiful husband. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the Lord found me 42 years ago and uh, drastically changed my life in the blink of an eye, in a heartbeat, in the snap of a finger, as quick as you can even imagine, from one millisecond to the next, this person was gone and the new creature arose. So I thank him for that. It was a week earlier that uh, he did that. Uh, the next week, he would have had to dig me out of a hole so deep that I made for myself a dangerous hole that I may not have come back. So I will forever thank him for that. And uh, I will never, ever, ever, ever forget it. I am extremely keenly aware of God's presence in my life every single day, every moment of the day. I feel him in here. I feel him all around me. There's no good thing that dwells in my flesh except God. I eat, I breathe, and I sleep the Lord. So on that note, my perspective has changed as I've gotten older, as probably all of us have, from year to year, from month to month. Um, it's different now that I'm going to be 79 uh, here in a couple of weeks than it was even a year ago. And uh, my perspective on people and what they mean to me, how my perspective on them and the world around me has changed really quite drastically to the point where I view everything differently now, even God. Has God changed? No, of course not. He's God, he always will be. He will always love us, care for us, hold us in his arms. Uh, he is the, he's God, he's everything. He's omnipresent, he's omnipotent. He will never ever leave you or forsake you. On that, you can count. But on people, we don't count on as much. So I am just so grateful and so thankful to have God in my life. I, I don't even know how I could live anymore without knowing that I wake up every day and I thank him for my life and my breath, for every move that I make. Um, I thank him in everything. And do I thank him for my voice? No, <laughs> but I'm thanking him. The Bible says we should thank him in everything. So I thank him in everything. I don't wait for bad things to leave in my life. I don't wait for good things to come. I just try to take every single day as it is and live for the joy that he brings me in my life every single day. My prayer life has changed considerably. I used to pray, of course I pray for people, but I used to pray a lot of things that I, not that I have a lot of needs. I mean, I've got food, clothing, and a roof over my head, but I used to pray I don't even remember what I prayed for, but there was something that maybe I wanted uh, or wanted for God to do in my life and waited and waited and waited. I don't pray that way anymore because he knows what I need and what I want. He knows every hair on my head. So how could he not know what I'm about to ask for? So for me, it was sort of a ridiculous experience to continue to even mention those things. So now, when I'm praying, I'm just going to read you this little thing briefly, and then I will. Um, uh, I don't need to ask him if he's listening. I know that he is. But rather, am I listening to my prayers? I wrote this down so I wouldn't forget. Does what I say impact me? Have I changed? If I'm under the impression that I'm telling something to God that he doesn't know, well, that's really ridiculous. Of course he knows. He knows everything. 
So for me now, the point of prayer is not to remind him what I need from him, but rather remind myself of what he needs from me, or what he wants to do or change in my life. I'm not perfect. I don't really want to be. What would I need God for? Nobody's perfect anyways. We can never be ever in a million trillion years. Could any human being ever be perfect? Amen? Because there's only one perfection, and that's God. <coughs> and he has renewed us. He has put his spirit in us. He has put Jesus as, as, a, as the person in the flesh that we can look and know what a loving God we have. So we've got the Spirit, we've got God the Father, we've got the Holy Spirit, and really, what more do we need? Amen? Amen. 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 Now comes the time in our service where we take our offering, where we're off, where we are allowed to give thanks for our abundance by placing something in the offering plate or um, you may touch the plate you may touch the plate uh, when it's passed even if you're not putting something in just to remind you of all that you give in gratitude to God out of your own life and your energy and your love so uh, we will pass the plate in just a minute. If you are at home, you can go to orovalleyucc.org and go to the My Offering button, and you can uh, donate something in that way, or you can mail something to the church office at any time. So now, come, let us share our hearts and our abundance with God. I wanted to you know before we move forward to make a quick mention of how the conversation went for Alexis to play uh, when I asked Yolanda, she can play something reflective or peaceful, and she said, well, she can play Rachmaninoff. And I said, that's perfect. That is quite perfect. Uh, because at, uh, at some point, uh, a group of painters took, uh, uh, took um, place in an art contest to see who could create the best painting of peace. and. Um, the painting that won um, was not very peaceful. They had many beautiful entries of the sun setting, palm trees, lush green hills, uh, but there was one, one that stood out. Uh, Jack Dawson's painting of a storm, water raining, dark clouds, lightning. And how did this win? Because amidst all of this trouble, there was uh, a small dove just resting in peace. So that's the meaning where the best place for peace is going to be amidst the storm. So now Alexis is going to play out the storm. <laughs>
led us to this place to heal and inspire us, to gently redirect, redirect us until we at least see the world as God does and love it with God's love. With our gifts, we affirm that God's generosity can make us all into a new creation by the way we give of ourselves. Amen. The scripture today is Mark 12, 28 to 34. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Well, I just give thanks for our, our two people who have shared with us this morning how God transforms lives and uh, what it means to love God with your heart, mind, soul, and spirit. May uh, the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts here this morning be acceptable in your eyes, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I really was not steeped in biblical teachings as a child. I knew the Lord's Prayer. In fact, I have a little, I had it on a little 78 that I would play on my little record player. I really didn't have a context for it, but I would sit and play it over and over, and it's the version that we sing every Sunday. And so uh, there's a heart connection to that for me. I knew the golden rule, and I knew the Christmas story. And that was about it until I was a young adult, a teenager. Uh, then I started trying to make sense of things for myself. I read the Bible and could make nothing of it. I read the Christian scripture and it made no sense to me until I got to the Sermon on the Mount, the chapters in Matthew 5 and 6. There I became interested. It drew me in and I started to reflect. I wasn't sure what the words meant, but they spoke to me. Jesus says, do not store for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust consumes and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves, what is it? The treasures. Treasures in heaven. Treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes, but where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Interesting stuff. 
even to me as a teenager. It ran counter to the culture and to a way of thinking about life as in a consumer mentality and to focus on what are you going to do with your life, what's your career going to be, what kind of home are you going to build for yourself, and all of that. Later on, in the same chapter, it says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? And further it says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. I'm 67 now. I was about 15 to 16 then, and I'm still learning the truth and power of those simple words. In much of my recent reading and contemplation, I keep coming across similar statements to that advice about not worrying about tomorrow. Statements that say that if you have anxiety or fear, sadness or depression, anger or resentment, it is almost always because you're not living in the present moment like you were seeing here. Uh, you are anxious or fearful because of your thoughts are in the future, tomorrow, next week, the tasks that you have to do this afternoon or maybe in 20 minutes. Uh, whatever it is that's causing you to miss what's right in front of you. It's interesting, isn't it? If we're sad or depressed or angry or resentful, it almost always means we're living in the past moment. We're living five minutes ago, 30 days ago, 30 years ago. We are retelling a difficult story of what we have endured or of someone who should love us or should have loved us more. Some hurt we experienced or guilt or regret that we have about our own actions in the past. But if we were able to pause and let that go and wake up now to what is right in front of us, what would we discover? What would we discover if we stop? right now. We might discover that we lack nothing. That we have everything we need in this moment. Here he's saying peace, peace. Can you find peace? Right now we are fine. We're whole. We're whole right here, right now. And Jesus tells us not to waste our energy getting ahead or stockpiling treasures. Your treasure must be in life, in the now, in the present moment, like Vera says. Uh, not acquiring and building. Oh, we can have dreams, of course we can have dreams, but your heart must be open to the here and now, to what's in front of you. And who is in front of you? And we must remember the one who, though not visible, accompanies us and holds us every single moment, every breath. One of the authors I read asks, are you one of those people who lives life saying, I will be happy when, or I will be happy if? If so, he says, you are completely missing the opportunity to be happy now. You are living in the future. You're missing the opportunity to love God, love yourself, and love your neighbor. I invite you to take a moment with me and just breathe. We did this yesterday. Take a breath. And let go of everything in the future. Feel the air, feel your body. Feel the life within you. Breathe in the peace of being in this beautiful place. Breathe in needing nothing in this moment. No need to do. 
no need to take care of anyone or anything surrounded by God's love and peace. Feeling the love of God in this quiet moment with your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And just love the moment. And then open your eyes. Look around. Reflect how much of the pain in your life comes from old hurts resentments from belief that there is something or someone else who you need or needed in order to be whole. What would happen if you just let those stories, those deep hurts, those needs to be left in the past or released of the future? What if instead you were just here, here and now, Yes, you may have aches and pains, and your voice may be hoarse, oh. or you may be tired, and you can take a breath still. You can fill your lungs, as Vera taught us yesterday at the retreat. We can let out that slow, gentle breath that gives us peace. Look around, there is life in the present moment, there is beauty, there is love and fellowship, and there is connection to a sacred source, a source of love that surrounds you and lives within you. Not out there in the future, not at some moment in the past, all of it is here and now. And one final thought, as I'm thinking about my week ahead, who are the happiest people that you know? The most joyful in general. I am just about to spend six days with the happiest people I know, three of our eight grandchildren. I think hanging out with them makes me happy in part because doing things with them brings me into what's right in front of me what's right in front of us right now. Puzzles, hand gates, uh, chalk, markers, flowers, rocks, and minerals, or imaginative, imaginative toys, even sometimes playing computer games. <laughs> Whatever. We often say that childhood is a time of innocence that we have lost. They just don't have the responsibilities that we have weighing us down. But maybe it is simple as learning what we all, learning from them what we already know. Right here, right now is it. <coughs> Remember that Jesus also said that unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the realm of God. Here is music she played and she was singing just here this morning that she had us drum to yesterday. We will, we will rock you. That's play and play. So breathe, live, play. Rest in the shade and watch the birds and the clouds. And maybe later this summer we'll get to play in the rain, but we won't worry about it right now. This is it. This is the Alpha and the Omega here this morning. Open your eyes and enter the realm of God right now. Now. And now. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite Viri and uh, Vera to come up and say the benediction with me. Nancy is reminding you to say, please, please, please come up to our catered lunch and you can have lunch and then you can take some lunch home with you as you come up to Fellowship Hall after the service. So come on up to the benediction. Yeah. Oh, sun behind all suns. O oh, soul within all souls, grant us the grace of dawn's glory. Amen.
Grant us the strength for us on God's grace, that we may be well in our own souls and in the heart of the world's healing this day. Amen.